I have created an extremely easy to use maze generation kit. Uh, you can, it basically makes mazes in any shape you want. You can make large mazes, you can make small mazes, you can make really weird mazes. Um, as long as there is a pathway to the end, it will generate the maze. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to use it, um, the algorithm that I implemented, and then some of the interesting logic uh, techniques that I used. All right, so let's just get right into it. How do we, how do we use this maze kit? Uh, let's start a new scene. And we're gonna go search. And if you, I'm pretty sure you can just search maze, maybe? How about maze kit? Yeah, maze kit, maze kit. All right, place it in. Um, so first thing is, it's really important to align this to the grid, all right? It is very important. Uh, we can keep that, it's not no big deal. So all you really need to do is three things. You need to place your obstacles. You need to, and then once once that's finished, place your start, the maze start, and the maze end, and then you're done. That's it. Uh, a couple, uh, just just one, really just one thing you need to keep in mind, or I guess two things. If the obstacles don't close in the maze, so like, for example, if we even, if we even just leave one square open like this, um, it'll just generate forever. So let me just show you that. It'll just go on forever. It'll, it'll kind of like escape and literally just go on forever uh, until thermo runs out so the so the first rule is you you, you need to enclose it with with uh these walls they, they're labeled objects and they're collidable and visible the other rule is uh i mean this is pretty obvious but there needs to be a way to get to the exit i mean it doesn't like break if there is no way it just it just doesn't reach the exit <laughs> right make sure i mean and it can be as small as one square make sure there's a way to get to get to the exit all right so yeah that's those are pretty much the only two things you can do whatever you want guys like you can play it as long as there's a way to get okay that that might have okay i guess we found a bug so uh we fix that bug we're allowed to do this now um I, I mean there's really nothing else to talk about with how to use this it's it's really robust um i i would just i don't think i mentioned this i would highly recommend uh using it with the two grid there really is nothing else to talk about with the setup so let's talk a little bit about how this works the algorithm that I chose to implement is called hunt and kill. It's very intuitive. It's so intuitive, in fact, that I actually came up with this algorithm on my own and that like with no research or anything. And then while researching maze algorithms, I found it. So, um, but why, why is this good? It, I, I personally think this algorithm is fantastic because it can be done in dreams relatively easily obviously because i did it but uh, let me show you why it's very intuitive um i'll leave a i'll leave a link to this page in the description but um yeah so let me go over it one more time just in a hope hopefully a more understandable way because because the the website's great but it's uh more geared towards like programming w what's going on here we are generating a random path until we hit a dead end okay we hit a dead end then what we pick an open wall all right so here's an open wall here's an open wall here's an open wall and here's an open wall we pick one of the open walls and basically cut and basically start a new path from it all right uh it, it has chosen this one so it's going to delete this wall it's going to place a new it's, it's gonna, and then it's gonna start a new path uh, from, from this wall, see? Okay, and then we hit another dead end. And then it shows this open wall. It, it goes pretty fast, so I'm trying to pause it before. Um, okay, so, so and there's one more thing. Here, here's kind of a special thing. The first time it hits the exit, the first time it hits the exit, it just, crea it just creates a dead end. Even though 
there was room for it to keep going, I, I, f I basically force it to, to turn into a dead end. Um, and now, even though it's here, it's gonna connect here. It, it's not gonna connect here, it connects here. Because again, I, I once the first time it hits the exit, I force it to become a dead end, see? And then we've hit the final dead end. Um, there are no more open walls because I mean, you can see there are no more open walls and then it just deletes itself. Um, so that's how it works. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, ha I'm happy to say I came up with that like on my own. Obviously, like maze generation is is pretty. It's not a new thing, but but yeah, let's get into the logic. The scary. It is actually kind of terrifying. Uh, <laughs> the the logic. Oh boy. Um, what do I even want to talk about? Because maybe maybe I don't even talk about it at all, and you guys can just kind of kind of mess around with it because. I mean, frankly, the amount of people that actually watch this part of the video is <laughs> is very low. Um, what is there anything interesting to talk about? I guess, I guess let's let's talk a little bit about like the loop, the the logic loop that I that I created. So there's kind of like two mode states modes. I, I don't know what you want to call it. There's emit mode. And there's teleport. I, mode is not the right word. Uh, state, how about? There's emit state, there's teleport state. What dictates which state you're in? This laser scope. Uh, it's just shooting straight down at the cursor. If there is no, uh, wh what do we call these? Spots, uh, tiles, I call them tiles. It, if there is no tile below the cursor, we are in emit mode, right? Because there's no tile, so there, we should emit one. If there is a tile below the cursor, teleport to a to it to the next spot, to to an open spot, and it just keeps going back and forth between those two things. It emits, and then it immediately teleports. One second later, it emits, and then it teleports, emits, it teleports, emits, teleports until we hit a dead end. When we hit a dead end, you'll notice that this dead end wire turns on and a lot of crap happens. I don't even, I, we have unlabeled keyframe. This is great. This is just great. Um, what happens? All right. What happens? We do not teleport to the next spot uh, because there is no next spot. We're at a dead end. Where do we teleport? we teleport to a random open wall. Uh, this is the logic here in each, this is the open wall logic. We're randomizing the priority of the exclusive gate. And one of these exclusive gates is going to have a wall available tag on. Only one of them is going to be on and the one that's on is the one that, that the cursor teleports to. Um, where is where is that teleporter? Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, here it is, here it is. Wall, okay, there you go, wall available, see? Wall available, wall available. Uh, dead end, turns this node on, and it puts us in the B. I, I don't know what these keyframes, okay, so these keyframes swap, yeah, sure, okay. Uh, I don't wanna get into this part where I'm basically, I'm rem <sighs> I'll talk about it later. Okay, so we're, we're teleporting to the next wall available, and, and then we just start, we're, we're back at the loop. We, we emit, teleport, emit, teleport. There is more to this, okay? Um, mainly the system that uh, basically, let me show you. It delete, the, okay, so when, I, when I'm placing a tile, it not, uh, it not only deletes the wall here it places it with a deleted wall of the so it could so it is already connecting to the next spot um i i did this because it may it's the only way to make it go as fast as it goes 
I, I don't want to get into how that works. I'm basically remembering with with variables. Actually, I'm remembering the next direction. Or sorry, with I'm re I'm remembering the previous direction with variables, and I don't even know. <laughs> uh, like I'm setting it. Th this is the current direction, right? This is the current direction, and I'm setting this variable every time it emits, which makes it be the previous direction. And then I'm using the previous direction and the next direction to basically uh, turn on deleters. Um, so the, the, I, I'm using the trick, I, you might not have seen the video, but where I'm not emitting with wires, but I am putting these wires into looped nodes into the thing I'm emitting and it, and it saves the data. It, it saves whatever this value is. Um, and then I'm using that value to uh, delete the walls, basically delete the walls that need to be deleted. I, the, the reason I'm doing this, I'm doing, I'm trying to do this as fast as possible so I can make it work um, every every two frames. If I if I put this at one frame, I, I, I don't believe it works. And uh, hey, if this works, I'm gonna freak out. But I, I have, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically that's a working maze, but. Uh, unfortunately, I have to I have to add a, a two frame delay, which is 0 0.066, um, which is still fast, but it's I don't know. Um, and and the only reason I'm able to do it that fast again is because I'm I'm basically deleting these walls as soon as possible. Okay, so how how do I actually randomize the path? Um, so we're here, right? The, the, uh, so we're gonna spawn a tile here. How do I choose the next one? Uh, the, the next, like, the, the next tile in the path. I have laser scopes on each side of the cursor, all right? And they're checking if there's, if there's uh, space for the next, for the next tile. If there, if it detects something, there's no space. If it doesn't detect something, I add it to the pool of available places you can go. And uh, the, each of these chips represent a, a, a new spot the path can go. Um, there's probably, yes, there is a not gate, exactly. So if it detects something, that means it's blocked. So it goes into a not gate, so it doesn't turn this exclusive gate on. So it's not one of the available spots. Uh, the other three are available. So up, left, and right. So, uh, and you see how uh, this exclusive gate is is has a signal into it this one does and this one does this one happened to have the highest priority in this case because again i'm randomizing the priority so it is chosen up to be the next spot so it's the next spot is going to be the, i mean this is the current spot where it is the next one is going to go up so it's going to go up twice see um that i mean it's it's really simple honestly it's i mean if you know how exclusive gates work um so that's that's how I'm generating the random path. There is one more thing that I'd like to go over um, that I got a couple of comments on in my in my post show, showing showing off this. And it was how how like can you wait like different directions? Like can you prioritize maybe mazes going up and down, for example? Um, and the answer is yes, sort of. So there's a couple places where you'd want to do that. The first one is, uh, again, the next the next spot. So so when you're generating a path, it, it's randomly choosing between these four to, to choose the next spot. So you could like, you could prioritize these by literally just, um, by by literally just like adding ten to this value, um. like this and so let's do up and down how about that so the new paths will i believe will always try to go up and down i mean so there you go i mean that's exactly what i expected actually another thing is um you could also mess around with these so what, what is this this is uh, this is the logic for 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 choosing a new path once the current path has hit a dead end. So maybe you want 
every new path to try to start at the top, maybe. I don't know. So, because these never rotate, right? So, so, so maybe we could add 10 to this priority, right? Like, you, well, actually, we could do that right here. So, uh, let's see what happens. There's, there's a bunch of stuff you can mess with. Um, so now every dead end, it's going to try to, well, okay. There, there literally was no open wall that was, um, at the top. So it did the side instead, but yeah. Um, anyway, that's kind of where you would mess, like where you would mess with that. Uh, one other thing you could possibly consider is randomizing the obstacles. So like you could randomly place cubes like procedurally, like put, put put some random obstacles in and then it'll generate around them. I don't know, like you could do a bunch of different stuff. Let me know what you guys come up with. I would love to, I would love to hear it and see what crazy things you guys do with this. I think I'm gonna end it there. Obviously there's more logic and I would implore you to kind of check it out. It's pretty complex, not gonna lie. So this, this could be a cool thing to just try to like look at. Uh, fully remixable. Um, fully remixable. The links are in the district description. I, I, this got really popular on Twitter and Reddit. So hopefully this, it seems like you guys like this sort of stuff. Um, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions at all, any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, the best place to ask them is my discord. Uh, the link again is in the description. Uh, so with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.